Hey, hey, Tony Gaston here. Another episode of Talks with Tony. Now, let me see. We got a short question right here. So it may not be much to it. Hi, Tony. I'm in my late 20s and I wanted to know if you can shed some light on why men these days are purchasing rings but never going down the aisle, purchasing Birkins, real expensive watches, etc. Even businessmen that are in the street that are in the street life for the most part. Me personally, I love those things and have dated in that caliber before, but what's the point to buy more time with you? Chances of marriage look slim. How to set myself apart? I see marriage for me, but the men, men but the men's mentality my age range is totally strange these days. I usually attract older men. I'm 27. I'm keeping hope alive. I need a stand-up man's opinion. I don't have uncles or a father I can freely speak to in this manner. Can you do a video? All righty. Oh, yeah, I'm typing for real now. I, be, I know how to type now. How you think I type these books? Yeah, I'm like, oh, I'm type faster than me. Yeah, you right now. Yeah, yeah. Hundred words a minute, faster than you. You look in your clerical job. I know you've been uh... So, uh, with this right here, you hit it right on the head. Is what y'all call future faking. So the men today, this the thing, is because of social media, and this is why y'all women really got to get your stuff together. Because of social media, women are ever increasingly wanting to compete with other women in the material space. Because of social media, men are really focused on making money now. Because with you got to remember, Instagram is ruining society because every it's a highlight reel. You see everybody highlight reel, but you don't see anybody's behind the scenes. And this literally, I remember being at a place, being at a, a hotel in Miami years ago, where all the like little people be going, you know, celebrities and stuff. I think it's a club in there. It's Fontaine Blue, which I used to call it Fountain Blue till I heard the people on their promotional videos say Fontaine Blue. I was like, oh, okay, I thought that was the Fountain Blue. But here I was sitting there at my cabana that, and this was 2015, 2014. And this cabana, it costs, I think it was like $600 or $800 for the day. And it was out my budget, but it was my wife's birthday. And it was me, her, our two sons, and uh, her mom. So I rented it. And it's it's some of them around the pool. But they had this one that's like in the middle of the pool. Like it's in a private pool and it's in the middle. You got a walkway to it. And it's just, it's by itself. And it had a sign in front of it because nobody had rented it. And it was like closed off. It's something that you'll expect P. Diddy to get. I seen these two little, like my grandma would say, helpers. I, don't, I ain't calling nobody no help. I'm going to put this on my grandma. God rest her soul. I seen these two little help. They done hopped the sign. <laughs> they doing swim moves at the NFL, NBA, spin moves. They done hopped the sign. Uh, uh, uh. Dove on the cabana. Both of them now. Two of them. Two little, you know, young lady probably look 18, 19, at the max 21. Dove on the cabana. Boom. Got their phone out. Then hopped up, uh, uh, before any staff got over there, got out of there. They got on this cabana that probably cost fifteen hundred a day. Anybody from that area who done been to Fontaine Blue probably know about that cabana. Took the picture, got up, took off running. They broke, busted, and disgusted. And post that on Instagram though, or Snapchat. Or whatever they had back then. It was, Instagram was out. So now they probably got all of the other girls who follow them jealous. What? They got a cabana at, at the fountain. 
blue. Woo! Uh uh. You know what? I was just getting ready to stop doing fraud, but I need to hit me one more lick. Mm. I'm finna get this money because she is not finna show up on me like that. And so that's what social media has done. And that's why the men your age, 27, they so they know women your age becoming very wrapped up in bags and necklaces and jewelry and cars because the rappers buying this stuff for their girlfriends, the influencers. You know, people going on my page, on my wife page, and see her and something designer and like, oh, the light coat? And so it's like people just counting everybody pockets, people watching what everybody else doing. So it's becoming a competition. And so what men are getting used to is they getting used to now being able to buy a woman. They getting used to now being able to cheat on this woman. Eat on, uh, OK, do whatever they want to do. But here go this bag. Here go the keys to this new car. Here go this diamond necklace. Here go this diamond bracelet, diamond watch. Here go your name on my, over my heart. Here go your name on my arm. Here go your name on my forearm. Here go your name on my forehead. You see what I mean? Here go your name under the bottom of my foot, on the back of my scalp. So now these women, they like, oh, that's so sweet. He got my name on his eyelash. So anytime he blinked, and he telling a lie that other girl see my name and so she's like oh i know he loved me and then you got the young ladies who they getting cheated on left and right but they in they roll royce they in they uh lamborghini urus um like the one brother said after he cheated on his wife he went and bought that lamborghini urus and and they showed the clip and he lamborghini urus he had to let y'all know he got it. Why it was yours? And guess what? She stayed right on with him. So what message does that send to these young men? You could cheat emotionally, physically, spiritually, however you want to cheat. But you need to have the bread to keep her. Because what, what the women saying? I'd rather cry in my mansion or I'd rather cry on my Birkin. I'd rather cry in my foreign car than to be crying in a hoopty. Than to be crying in an apartment that's three months behind rent. So women telling themselves every man cheats. And that's not true. But that's the lie from the pit of Satan house. That women want a lot of women want to believe. So women are putting up with cheating. And they just being turned over to a reprobate mind. Becoming a savage heart. And they're saying hey. Okay, you're going to cheat, do your thing. I'm going to answer a few of these DMs, make you jealous of these men who trying to holler at me. And then because you want to get me back, I'm finna run that card up. So I'm running up this here check with anything you can afford. If the man work a regular job, it might just be Roof Chris. Go on to Roof Chris. Pay $200, $250 for a dinner. It might be that right there. Simple as that. It, you know, it might be a new whole outfit from Hot Tropics. You know, Charlotte Roos. You know, if that's where his bread at, but and that's what she used to wear, he going to the mics of what he can afford at Gap, Hollister, American Eagle, H&M, uh, 21, Forever 21. I used to shop at all them places. You know, and, and, hey, the clothes look good. So guess what? He going in there doing a whole haul. He doing a whole haul from Forever 21. And she just as just as static as she could be. So then she said, oh, this mean love. And so what women have to do today is you got to stop being bought. Got to stop being bought. You got to stop thinking that femininity means accepting stuff from a man that you barely know from a boyfriend. You got to stop mean. You got to stop thinking that means being feminine. Being feminine don't mean being disabled, being crippled, being needy, being beggy, being wantful. Feminine can mean strong, confident, independent. Feminine can mean, listen, we are dating. 
I separate dating from marriage. Everything that you think to do and want to do in dating to me is a marriage benefit. This could be feminine. This is what you could say as a feminine woman. So do you, yes, do you believe that a man should pay the bills? He say yes. Do you believe a man should pay for dinner? He say yes. Do you could say I believe the same, but I'm getting to know you. So I don't feel comfortable accepting anything from you until we all the way exclusive a whole 100% item because I don't ever want you to feel like I owe you something. That could be totally feminine. And that's honestly, if I had a daughter, that's what I would tell her to tell this man. Like I would tell her, don't accept nothing from these men because these men today, they're strong army. Like the letter I read earlier, two letters ago, she said the first time she was with the man, he forced himself on her. That right there, she should have shot him. But you know, I would have had soon. That was my daughter. But even if it was in the booty cheek, in the in the thigh. Hope I ain't hit no artery. But hey, you finna you finna take this. You finna get this. <laughs> Boy, you crazy. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of these men today, they really starting to act that way. And you never know which one you dealing with. You never know if you dealing with the one that he feels like if he buy you dinner, if he pick you up, spend his gas money on you, buy you dinner, get you a rose, that he fixing to get that. And if you say no, you're not ready for that. You ain't going there. He fixing to take that. It is more and more men who doing that today. And it's less and less women that's willing to go all the way of fighting for their life it's a lot of women that when put in that position because of the horror stories they've seen on the news they surrender and just give that man what he want and he then tell himself he just applied pressure but he didn't really do that what she's saying what she think it was for him he just was being assertive he'll tell himself that because a lot of women don't want to hit him in that nose or spray that mace in his eyes because they're afraid of what he could do. So they surrender. So that's why it's a new day and age. This not 1950. This ain't 1980. So you got a lot of women that's telling you, oh, you need to be feminine and don't forget your feminine energy. And if you allow a man to go Dutch on a date, meaning he pays half, you pay half, then he's going to be 50-50 for life. That's a lie. That is a lie because the women who tell you that ain't even been married a lot of times. And the one who they is married to, because they online spewing all that, if they is in a relationship, that man plotting to do them so dirty. Because a man hate for a woman to be giving out these scandalous gold digging tactics. And then he sitting there and he like, she really thinks she playing me. Like, she really thinks she got me wrapped around her finger. This man cheating on that woman so bad. If she got a man, that man cheating so bad because she think that she manipulating him, that she seducing him like she Delilah and he Samson, like she Jezebel. You see what I mean? And so because of that, men not falling for that no more today. And what men are starting to respect now See, it used to be offensive when a woman was independent to a man. Men used to get uh, offended by a woman who was independent, you know, in the 90s and before. But nowadays, a woman who, when the bill come out, she say, um, this for my half. Even if he say, nope, you keep that. I got it. He just gained so much respect for her. The fact that she even offered it, even though he don't want her to pay it. The fact that she offered it. So understand that the line that you have to toe now, you let a man know, I don't want nothing from you because we're not one. We're not an item. We're not all the way exclusive. We ain't a whole couple. So don't feel like you owe me something like, but I appreciate what you do. So what a man want to see is that you have agency in your life, that you independent can stand on your own two feet. But then you are mature enough to be interdependent. That's a hard balance for a lot of people to understand. But here's what it looks like in essence. You go to dinner. Uh, he lets you order first. 
You order your food. You let him order his food. Don't order for him. You not his mommy. Let him order his food. Y'all eat. He asked for the bill. When he asked for the bill and it comes to the table, you pull out your car and you say, hey, here, let's go half. Then if he is a good man and he is serious about you, he will take your card out and he will say, here is your card. Don't do that again. And that right there is what being independent, but mature enough to be interdependent looks like. That's what it looked like. Okay. You dating, you're not asking him for rent money. You're not asking him for gas money. You're not asking him for car note money just because y'all dating or even because y'all sleeping together. That's why you need to keep your legs closed. So to answer your question, you say, look, the chance of marriage looks slim. How to set yourself apart. I'm going to tell you one thing that's going to set you apart. Is one is two things that's going to set you apart. Carrying your own weight and keeping your legs closed. That's it. That's it. That's the only two things going to set you apart. It, you, why you ain't say being a woman of God? Because every, every woman say that and then be on their bike and be singing on the microphone. Be just all and be hollering about they a woman of God. And this man like, oh, you is? <laughs> what God? What God? You all about? He just, and, and he lose all respect for her. So it is the two things that's going to separate you is keeping your legs closed. That also mean keep your mouth closed. That also mean making him keep his mouth closed. Don't think that because you're not intercoursing that you're doing something good when if y'all doing oral. Okay? So get it together. Nothing. Says the most y'all doing session. Mwah. Mwah. Kiss on your hand. Kiss on the forehead. That's it. That's it. Ain't no uh, none of this. Ain't no squeezing food. Ain't none of that. No. Ain't no slipping no hand down. No well. No. Uh-uh. Conversation. Making love to the mind. Keep your legs closed. Keep your eyes open. Your ears open. And carry your own weight. Now, if the man you offer to pay, he say don't do that again, then don't do it again. Because then you will be emasculating him. But if he say no thanks, I got it. Then the next time, the next date, you do it again. After the second or third time, if he's a good man and he's serious about you, he's going to say, stop offering to pay. Okay? He's going to tell you like that right there. You don't have to pay for anything. I got this. This is what I grind for. This is what I work for. I got this. All right, you take that, boom, and keep your card in your purse. But you let him know, I'm not a taker. I'm not in, in expectation to be bought because although you think that means you feminine no it does not you can have on jordans and jeans and be feminine you can have on two garbage bags and be feminine feminine ain't about what you wear and you letting the man pay for dinner that's not femininity to a man so here's the thing what i'm trying to help you understand you letting women tell you what femininity is because they done been operating from a Jezebel spirit and they don't even understand that they man that they so-called got is gay or they man is bisexual or they man cheating on them. But I could look right at that man and because I already know a real man not finna be with no woman that specializes in tactics to deceive a man and get all the money you could get from a man. A real man ain't gonna be with her. That man setting her up and if a man with her, he like men too, and she is his beard. That's one thing that women don't know. So when you trying to worry about how you gonna get a man, do you wanna be with a woman or you wanna be with a man? Cause I'm gonna tell you right now, a woman can't tell you what a man thinking and what a man feel and how men move other than the men they done slept with. And hopefully that ain't no whole lot. And if it is a whole lot, then okay, all right, still. You just, we don't understand the opposite mindset that well, all the way thorough. But I'm here to tell you about men, okay? Because I done played every single role and I done been around every single role. Being on football teams my whole life from the age of 7 to the age of 21. Being in barbershops my entire life. Men know men. And so one thing I'm going to tell you, in this day and age, 
A man is looking for an independent woman who is mature enough to become interdependent when the time calls for interdependence. A man is looking for a woman, a real man is looking for a woman who knows her worth, knows her values, and will keep, know her value, and will keep her legs closed and make him earn her love, earn her, make him put in the work to show himself approved before she drops her guard and gives herself to him. And if that means marriage first before going all the way, he is okay with that because he's a real man and he wants a rare woman. He don't want a woman that come a dime a dozen. He don't want a woman that she'll do anything as long as he buying bags and popping bottles and, you know, spending money. He don't want that kind of woman. That's a prostitute. Okay, the prostitute. A real man is looking for a wife who know who she is. See, one thing about when you got a real wife, that wife gonna say, "I got a headache tonight. I ain't. We ain't doing that. I ain't. We ain't doing that tonight. I got a headache." That wife gonna say, "No, it's not a good time," because she's a human with a heart, and she feels, and she lives, and she breathes. She's not a pawn on the chessboard. She's not a toy. She's not a robot. She ain't somebody you wind up her back and then she do whatever you do. You put a battery in her back, she do whatever you want to do. No, she got a heart. She got a mind. She got feelings. She got priorities. She got hopes. She got dreams. So she need to be treated as such. That's what a real man wants. A woman who knows her place in the world and knows her strength and that she's fearfully and wonderfully created. So when you become that, that's when marriage is not a slim chance. Marriage is a big chance when you become that woman who's not playing games who's not trying to play mind games but you operating from your fullness from your wholeness you operating from your pureness you operating from the right place in your heart and you take care of you you independent and you ready to become interdependent for the right man that right there is what's gonna set you apart it don't matter nothing else it don't matter because Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So it don't matter your complexion. It don't matter your height. It don't matter your weight. It don't matter your look because you never know what a man is attracted to. What that man is looking at. It ain't just one look, okay? Women are not monolithic. It is all kinds of shapes, sizes, colors, accents, all of this. And men have their own little taste. So it ain't just one wife for a man. A lot of times women think that, but no, just because a man have a light skinned wife don't mean that he don't like brown skin, dark skin, medium skin women. It just mean that he happened to meet that woman at that time in his life, a good man, a superficial man. Then yeah, he may have a preference. I want a woman like this. I only date dark skin women. Some white men, they only date dark skin women. And that's just their preference. And so some men, yes, but for a real man, it ain't about all those external things. It's about the connection in that moment. I never set out and say, my wife have to be this color because my wife, my, my relationship before my wife, she was darker than me. Before that was lighter than that. So it's like I was looking for a wife. Not not no certain height, not no certain uh, weight, shape, complexion. I was looking for the energy because every all that everything else right there change. I remember I had in my past I had a girlfriend that would be called unattractive, and I remember somebody, a, a woman said to me at college. She said, "You are a waste of a fine man," and she was saying that because the young lady I was day was considered looks challenged but i didn't realize it because i had got to know her as a person and then i kept going because her character was bad the next one character was bad met my wife good looking good character there was no other consideration in there i wanted a woman with a certain shape my wife did not have that shape but because she had what matters the most good character and i knew i wanted to be a good man we got married. So that's what I want you to understand. A lot of y'all going to do all this stuff. Get, get your body done. You're getting your lips pumped up. You're getting your booty pumped up. 
You're going to do cosmetic stuff. Listen, the man for you, he wants you just how God made you. And if, if the dentist or the gym can't change it, he don't need it to be changed. If you could go to the gym and build some muscle, lose some weight, whichever you're trying to do, then he fine with that. But if you got to go to Columbia to get on somebody's table to get something done, that ain't what he looking for, the man for you. So understand that all you got to do is operate in your fullness, operate in your wholeness, be all of you. And however God made you, the man for you, that's exactly how he wants you. I'm here to tell you, and a lot of, and the reason why it don't work out is because most women don't believe that. Most women don't believe that's the truth because you see grown boys. More grown boys have a platform and they showing you how to date and who they date and what they want and what they praise. And so you assume because they are rich or because they're famous or because they have a platform that that's what men are and that's how men think and that's a lie. You have to remember that the reason why the examples you see are negative is because Satan was kicked out of heaven and on earth and was given dominion on earth except for when a child of God called on God. But when you look at the music industry, it's devilish. When you look at the television industry, it's, de it's devilish. When you look at the world, it's devilish. And then God intervenes where his child calls him to. And so what you have to realize is the examples you see are negative and sending a certain message because it's grown boys who are given the platform. So if you look at somebody with a pure message, you will notice most of the people who pure in and out don't have over a million followers on a network on a certain social media outlet. Be most of the people, some do, but most don't because in our world, ignorance is rewarded before and over intellect. So intellect will win ultimately but it will be rewarded last it'll be recognized last when everybody when the land is barren and the hearts are destitute that's when people will start seeking and yearning for wisdom but as long as the land is plentiful everybody is given into their pleasures so you will see idiots and those with low intellect being given a platform to spew a ignorant message that programs society and it's typically in the races that want to be defeated that the, the power that be want to keep down so they will they will give a ignorant minority a platform to brainwash and program the rest of the people and because we associate money with success and money with happiness, we say, well, if this, if these people who are millionaires allow cheating and have threesomes and do all of this and do it, that must be the way to live because they obviously successful. No, they were given that success by man, not by God. And they were given that platform by man, not by God, because the powers that be want them people to be in a position to drive you down. Because if they put uplifting and intelligent and intellectual people in a position of influence and power, then those people can up in the system. And now the gap between the rich and the poor is closed. So that is why it appears that relationships are suffering and that there are no real men and that the wrong things are being focused on and praised. And that is because it's intentional, because if they can break down the home, then they break down the children and then those children grow up and become dependent on the system, dependent on welfare and, you know, food stamps and government assistance, dependent on handouts and their mind, their ingenuity, their genius is stolen from them. So people who look a certain way remain in power and those who don't look that way continue to be marginalized and downtrodden and kept out of the gates of real influence 
and real power in the world. And so that's why the relationships look like that. So when you are aware of this, that's when you have to stay true to your righteous mind and don't get weary in well-doing and say, well, I need to wear booty shorts with my cheeks hanging out. I need to sleep with a man in the first month. I need to sing on the microphone. I need to just worry about what gifts and bags he going to buy me and just let him cheat. I need to get him a threesome. I need to get him a foursome. I need to do this and that. No, that's what the adversary wants you to do. Hey, this is Tony Gaston. God bless you. I got to be gone, so this is the last video of the day. We'll talk soon.